For this video, I want to show you how to remember all of the values on a unit circle quickly and painlessly. So anyone who has dived into trigonometry knows how important the unit circle is. Let's take a look at it. The unit circle can be used to figure out key values of cosine and sine, just by looking at the coordinates of, say, the points on the unit circle. For example, if you were really interested in, say, figuring out the sine of 60 degrees, you could look at 60 degrees on the unit circle and then take the y-coordinate and you have its value. So square root of 3 over 2. So it's really important that you know all of these different values and angles that show up. The only problem is you can see that it's a bit of an information overload. In fact, I haven't even written out all of the, the points on the unit circle uh, just because I got a little bit lazy. But it's important that you do know these. So how is it that you can go about memorizing all of these things and keep them straight in your head? Well, one of the first things to recognize is that you don't actually have to memorize all of the values on the unit circle. In fact, probably the most important ones are just these ones in the first quadrant. The reason is that the values basically start repeating themselves as you go around the unit circle. Uh, they just might be a different sign. Let's take a look. So when I'm looking here at 30 degrees, I see I have the square root of 2 and 1 half. And when I'm over here at 150 degrees, I have almost the same values, negative square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. You can remember the signs of your values from simply remembering that all students take calculus. This will tell you that all the trigonometric functions are positive in the first quadrant, sine is positive in the second quadrant, tangent is positive in the third quadrant, and cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So that'll help you keep track of all the signs. Now also notice what corresponds to the different values. When I'm looking at 45 degrees over here, square root of 2 and square root of 2, uh, 135 degrees is the one that has the same values, just the first one is negative. And the reference angle for 135 degrees is 45. So if you think of the reference angle for all of these additional angles over here, you can see how they correspond back to this four, first quadrant. So when I'm looking at uh, 240, the reference angle for this is 60. So this will have the same values, 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. And it looks like they are both negative, since sine is negative and cosine is negative. So, if we can just remember this first quadrant, we are in good shape into remembering all of the values on the unit circle. So how can we go about this? Well, the quick and easy way to do this is to remember how to build the following table. If you can remember how to build this table, you will get all of the values in that first quadrant. Here's what you need to do. When you first start building this table, build a giant square root. We're going to put a lot of stuff underneath it, so it needs to be pretty big. Then start off with the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you can see you're just starting at 0, counting all the way up to 4. In the next row, start with 4, and now count down. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right, this table is almost done. Just a few more things we need to add to it. Let's divide this all by 2, and then let's explain what this means. This first row we're going to use for sine, and the second row we are going to use for cosine. These different columns correspond to the key uh, values of our angles. So we have 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And if you can remember how to build this table and read it, now you have all the values of you, that you need. Let me show you how this works really quick. So if I want to figure out the sine of 30 degrees, I know I'm using this first row and I'm using this second column. So I'll take the square root of 1, since it's underneath the square root, and put that over 2, or this equals just 1 half. Maybe I need to figure out the cosine of 30 degrees. Same way. I figure out my second row here, second column, square root of 3 since it's underneath the square root, all over 2. 
so I can quickly build my values and get the uh, parts that I need. Let's do some practice problems and see this table in action. So here I want to figure out the values of the following trigonometric functions. I got sine, cosine, I even threw in a tangent near the end. All right, so first thing we need to do is build our table so I have a good reference as to what all of these things are. So remember, giant square root, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all over 2. First row is sine, next one is cosine, and of course these are my key angles of 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. All right, now that I have this on the page, it'll be really easy to figure out all of these values. Let's do the first one, sine of 60 degrees, so I have the square root of 3 over 2, and I'm done. Cosine of 45 degrees, so I'm looking at this row, 45 degrees, so square root of 2, all over 2. All right, time for a trickier one. Cosine of 50 degrees. Now, remember for this one, I'm out of that first quadrant, so I need to think of its reference angle. The reference angle for 150 is just 30 degrees. And since I'm in that second quadrant, cosine will be negative. All right, so now I've taken it back to a place that I can do. I'm looking at cosine of 30 degrees. So square root of 3 over 2. And just like that, I have its value. All right, on to another one. Sine of 270 degrees. Hmm, okay, I'm definitely not in the first quadrant anymore. But let's take this all the way back to the first quadrant, thinking about its reference angle. So let's see, this is like sine of 90 degrees. And of course, when we're facing straight down like that, sine is negative. And now we're in good shape. Let's see, sine of 90 is square root of 4 over 2. And look at that, it reduces. So negative 2 over 2, or just negative 1 is my value. All right, one more to go. Now I threw this one in uh, because you can see it's not sine and it's not cosine. And so it seems like you're stuck at first uh, in terms of using this table. You're in good shape. Just, just remember that tangent is the same as sine divided by cosine. So we'll use the value of sine, uh, the square root of 1 over 2, all divided by our cosine, so the square root of 3 over 2. And then we just have to do a little bit of simplifying. So the top is really 1 half, and the bottom square root of 3 over 2. Uh, to divide fractions, you would flip and multiply. So let's flip this second guy over. Now that really shows that these 2's cancel. So you have 1 over the square root of 3. And of course, it's probably a good idea to rationalize your denominator. So multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3, leaving you with just square root of 3 all over 3. So again, if you can quickly build this table, you get a lot of information about the first quadrant, which is all you really need since all of the other quadrants are very similar, just possibly different in sign. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.